In week 12, we will continue our discussion of vibrational spectroscopy. This pre-lecture video and quiz will introduce you to local modes and group frequencies, which are important for understanding the vibrational motion and spectra of more complex molecules. So far in this course, we have looked at the vibrational motion and spectra of simple molecules, but what happens as molecules become larger? Well, as you should recall, for a molecule of n atoms, the number of modes is 3n minus 5 if it is linear, and 3n minus 6 if it is nonlinear. This means that the number of vibrational modes will increase rapidly, and as a consequence that the IR spectrum will become more complex, as illustrated here. This raises an obvious question. Can we understand enough of the spectrum of a large molecule for IR absorption spectroscopy to be a useful technique? The answer is yes, and the reason why has to do with how vibrations mix. As we discussed in the last lecture, molecular vibrations mix via resonance. This means that the extent to which the vibrational motions of different atoms mix depends on the relative vibrational frequencies of the bonds that they are part of. If all of the bonds are the same, such as in water or in methane, then the vibrational motions of the atoms mix completely to form modes where all of the atoms vibrate together at the same frequency. For example, in the last lecture we saw that methane has one symmetric stretching mode and three degenerate asymmetric stretches that involve all of the atoms moving together. On the other hand, if the intrinsic vibrational frequencies of the individual bonds are very different than they are out of resonance with one another, and the mixing will be weak, giving rise to what we call local modes. For example, in chloroform, the intrinsic frequency of the CCl bond is much lower than the intrinsic frequency of the CH bonds, and so the vibrational motion of the CCl bond doesn't mix with the CH vibrations and occurs at much lower frequency. The vibrations of the CH bonds do mix, but only locally, giving rise to stretching vibrations that occur at much higher frequency. So, how can we identify local modes? Well, there are two main things to look for. The vibration involves atoms with only one bond. This means that the atom vibrates into space rather than against other atoms. And two, the vibrating atoms have a different natural vibrational frequency to the connected groups which means that their vibration is out of resonance with their neighbors. If you recall the formula for the vibrational frequency of a harmonic oscillator, you can guess that connect pairs of atoms with very different bond strengths or reduced masses will give rise to local modes. For example, in hexane, the CH stretches and bends are decoupled from the CC stretches and bends giving rise to peaks around 2,900 and 1,500 wave numbers. If we now compare this to the spectrum for polyethylene, we find that the CH stretching modes and CH bending modes appear at almost the exact same frequencies. The existence of local modes in larger molecules is what makes it possible to identify many of the functional groups that are present. This can help to identify unknown molecules or to check that you've synthesized the right molecule. In order to interpret spectra, you should be aware of the frequency ranges of common functional groups. Stretches involving bonds to hydrogen will occur at the highest frequencies, around 3,000 wave numbers, followed by triple bonds, double bonds, and single bond stretches. For example, a sharp band around 2,200 to 2,400 wave numbers would indicate the possible presence of a CN or a CC triple bond. The end of the spectrum below 1,400 wave numbers is usually a complex area showing many, often overlapping bands. This includes bending vibrations as well as stretches involving single bonds. As such, it is often very difficult to assign peaks in this region However, it can still be used to identify a molecule by comparing its spectrum to a library of spectra for known molecules. For this reason, this part of the spectrum is commonly known as the fingerprint region. When trying to identify peaks in IR spectra, it is common to use a table of group frequencies, such as the one shown here. 
For example, this will tell you that the vibrational frequency of a CH stretch usually occurs around 3000 wave numbers, whether this is in methanol, a ketone, or a carboxylic acid. Besides a table of group frequencies, it is useful to keep a couple of other things in mind. First, the intensity of a peak in this spectrum is related to the dipole moment of the group. This means that not all groups present in a molecule may be visible as peaks in its IR spectrum. For example, the CC stretches in hexane are not visible in the spectrum because vibration of the CC bonds causes very little change in the molecular dipole moment. Another thing to keep in mind is that very broad absorptions around 3000 wave numbers usually indicate the presence of OH groups that are involved in hydrogen bonding. As an example of how this works, let's see if we can identify some of the groups present in the unknown IR spectrum we saw earlier. We're going to focus on the region above 1400 wave numbers since this is the region that is easiest to assign. Looking at our table of group frequencies, the sharp peak around 1700 wave numbers indicates the presence of a double bond, and given the intensity, it is most likely due to the presence of a carbonyl group, which has a much stronger dipole moment than a carbon-carbon double bond. The broad peak around 3000 wave numbers indicates the presence of a single bond to hydrogen, and given the width, it is most likely due to the presence of a hydrogen bonding OH group. The fine structure in the peak may also indicate the presence of some CH groups. So overall, we might guess that this is a carboxylic acid. And in fact, this is the spectrum for acetic acid, which has all of the functional groups present that we have identified. Note that in general, we would combine IR with other methods such as NMR and mass spec when trying to identify the structure of an unknown molecule. One final thing to note is that IR spectra are sometimes plotted in terms of the amount of light that passes through a sample rather than the amount of light absorbed by the sample. Such transmission spectra will look similar to the mirror image of the absorption spectrum as, illustra as illustrated here.